Thank you for coming to Teaching Behavior in the Midst of a Pandemic, Laboratories and Assignments. My name is Anne Danielson-Francois, and I'm going to be presenting on behalf of our group. The most important thing to remember as you're designing labs and assignments is equity, authenticity, and inclusion. Remember, we are all in the same storm, but not in the same boat. Inequities are exacerbated by the pandemic, the recession, the switch to online teaching in the midst of a movement for social and racial justice. So the first thing you can do is to build a sense of academic belonging in your course. And a great place to start is by reading Lee 2020. Representation leads to better outcomes in STEM. For other ideas, we're going to sprinkle them throughout this talk. For your lab mode of instruction, if you choose face-to-face -face and physically distant in an indoor lab, you automatically have about 50% capacity in that room and limited prep staff if you have them. You're going to need personal protection equipment and it's good to coordinate with your director of laboratories and EHS if you have them. You can take a cohort approach and rotate small groups of students through lab one week after another for some of the labs and then teach the remainder online. If you choose outdoor labs and field work in groups, it's much easier to be socially, physically distant and stagger student arrival times. It does require supervision in the field. Hearing can be an issue and you have to remember to disinfect shared equipment between students. If you choose remote field work, Students could do observations in a public zoo. They could do backyard or neighborhood observations, but again, there are some equity issues here. Remember that it is hard to ensure student safety, even in local public parks. Minority and female students alone in the field are vulnerable targets. Hashtag Me Too, Black Birders Week, Black in Nature. As Karina Newsom, who is the founder of Black Birders Week, has educated all of us. Remember, the most important rule is safety first. In terms of lab possibilities, you can come to our Google Drive repository for Evolution and Behavior Labs. We hope you come visit and take what you like, and please consider leaving a lab and joining the collaboration. You can use webcams to live stream behavior from naked mole rats to belugas. Sound recordings are available. Of course, there are collaborations like the one we have on Slack, and the link to join is here at the bottom of the slide. Field work we've already talked about, and then community science. So engaging with the broader scientific community is a wonderful way to introduce students to scientific life. You can mine the iNaturalist and eBird databases for species, analyze their distribution and migration, you can look at the distribution of invasive species, for example, and you can look at behavior. So recently, amateurs have identified never before seen mating behavior in arachnids and collaborated with expert curators on new projects through iNaturalist. iNaturalist is fantastic because students can make observations and then share them with other students, share them with you, share them with expert curators and contribute to the scientific enterprise. Other software you might consider are Boris, which is free, and it's a fantastic way to uh, record behavioral data from either live video or pre-recorded video. Raven, which is available through the Cornell Bird Lab, is another example which you can use to analyze sound production. In terms of assignments, you can use a backwards course design, which is what we recommend, design with the end in mind. Choose the most important items for students to learn and then design your assignments to meet those. Build in flexibility, build in alternative assignments because that is an equity issue. It's best to use frequent low stakes items instead of high stakes ones. And this also helps reduce the pressure on students to cheat. Student presentations can be pre-recorded and responded to asynchronously using discussion boards or voice thread, Flipgrid. And that's a pretty fantastic way to increase engagement in your online course. Consider your grading scheme. Use a mastery-based grading scheme, alternative grading scheme, ungrading for your assignments to help empower students in their own assessment, further lower the stakes, and reduce the time spent on grading. 
With a nod to Jeff Potos, use science poetry as an example of a great assignment where students boil down the main points of a paper into the form of a short poem. Great way to teach them how to be brief, clear, and to the point. And it's fun. You could do a mock ABS grant proposal. It's highly scaffolded, multiple low stakes items with a contract creating scheme. And here's an example from Stacy Weiss that she uses in her animal behavior course. If you'd like more detailed suggestions, please look for our paper on BioArchive. And please check out our related talk in this session, Teaching Behavior in the Midst of a Pandemic, Lectures and Discussions. Thank you very much, and we'd be happy to take any questions.